Hi, everyone. Michael Britt here. Now, I'm very proud that the Psych Files podcast has been so successful. It passed the 20 million download mark. And a lot of that success is due to my episodes on how you can use proven memory strategies to remember just about anything, from memorizing terms for a test to remembering people's names at a party or a meeting. So I put all of these episodes into one audio course. Hippos, aliens, and llamas quickly master the tricks to a great memory. And it's available now on avid.fm slash memorymaster. All one word. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Psych Files. I'm going to have you memorize Kohlberg's six stages of moral development. Let's jump right in. First off, there's three levels, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. I'm going to focus on memorizing these levels and the stages underneath them, not really too much on explaining them. You can find that anywhere else on the web and uh, in your textbook and stuff like that. So pre-conventional. So the hard part about these three levels is that it's the same word with a different prefix each time. Not each time, but two of the times. So it's kind of tough, but, but I think I got it. Now, first off, if you want to get the order, it's just PCP, right? Pre-conventional, conventional, post-conventional. So PCP, I don't know, whatever, it kind of falls off the tongue. Maybe you've heard of that term before. It has to do with the drugs and things like that. So whatever, you know, that's helpful, I guess. But um, pre-conventional, so let's walk through it. Now, pre-conventional has two levels to it. The first one having to do with obedience and uh, punishment. So the person does whatever decision they make in a morally difficult situation has to do with their fear of being punished or their desire to obey. Uh, So that's stage one. Stage two has to do with self-interest. And so you do whatever decision it is you're going to make has to do with whether or not it's going to benefit you. Okay, the what's in it for me thing. All right, so that's pre Convention. All right, so let's start right there. Pre. I'm going to go, I'm going to use the first three letters. Now I'm going to imagine a preacher. Okay, so you're following along. This is audio, but use your imagination. Picture a preacher in your head, a uh, guy in, uh, you know, black and white. Maybe he's behind, uh, you know, one of those pedestals or whatever. He's got one arm raised, right? This is the fire and brimstone kind of preacher. Hopefully that works for you. Let's go with that. Now, what is the preacher doing? Well, of course, the preacher works in the pre-conventional level because most people do, you know, people who listen to preachers usually do what they're going to do because they're afraid, right? They're afraid of going to hell, All right? So we, we obey. Uh, that works okay, but there's the second level in Kohlberg's model has to do with self-interest. And so I'm not going to really go with, with that, although I think that's helpful. I'm going to imagine a preacher. Now, I've got to associate with the preacher obedience, and self-interest. So I'm going to picture bees, bee, it could be bees dancing even, bee dance, right? or bees and ants, that sounds like obedience. Okay, i got to associate that with the preacher, and uh, self-interest. I'm going to go with selfish interest, which is about the same word, and that gives me fish. So now I've got a preacher, some bees and ants, <laughs> and uh, I'll go stick with the bees and a fish. So imagine, here's your first image, a preacher, he's at the, he's at the, the what do they call that? I guess it's a pedestal, and he is smacking some bees with a fish. I'm, I'm thinking that's going to work for you. I know, it's crazy, but go with me, as I say. So you've got pre-conventional, you've got bees for bee obedience, and you've got fish, which hopefully cues you to sell fish. Right, so if you're on a test and it says this person is doing this because it's in his self-interest, all right, so you're gonna go, oh, that's the selfishness, selfish. That's the it's in pre-conventional because I got the preacher and the bees. He's smacking bees. He's killing bees with a fish. Okay, bees are stage one. The fish is stage two. Ah, it's going to work. Uh, and I, by the way, I have a one as a bun thing, too, after I do this piece that I, you can use as well. But first, I want to use these three people. A preacher. Second one is a convict, right? So I've got conventional. So I've got to use just those first letters, con. So now you have to picture a convict in your head. And we're going to go back in a second, and I, and I, I promise you that preacher thing will work. In fact, all of these work. We'll go back over them as soon as I'm done. Convict. Okay, so picture some mean-looking guy. Stereotype is fine. This is a place where stereotypes really are helpful. 
Okay, so he's got, you know, kind of an ugly mug, and picture him behind bars. Okay, so because what's conventional all about? Okay, at the conventional stage three, this is about you doing what you, whatever decision you're going to make in a morally ambiguous world, you're going to make it based upon norms. That's stage three. All right, so societal norms. What does everybody else do in this situation? Stage four is law and order. Okay, this is where you first start to consider, well, I'm going to do this because that's what the law is and that's what we should do. So I've got level two, that's conventional. I've got a convict. I have to associate societal norms and law and order. Well, this isn't too hard. I'm going to picture the convict. He has the, remember they have those little things on them. And that's my cat in the background. Uh, hey, cut it out, Bodie. Okay, he's got uh, the piece of paper on him that gives their number. But instead of a number, his is going to say norm. So this is norm the convict. Okay, for social norms. Imagine the the door of the cell closing in front of norm. And that's law and order, right? So he's been put in jail. Okay, I mean, you could do other things with this. Let your imagination go. If law and order, you picture a judge or something like that, you could have a judge sitting or standing next to Norm, hitting him on the head with a gavel. If that gets you convict, level two, Norm, he's the convict, and law and order because the judge is standing next to Norm, hitting him on the head with a gavel, then you got the second level and the, the third and fourth stages. Okay, here in the U.S., there's a show called Law & Order. Now, if Law & Order instead, now you're a big fan of that show, take a character out of that TV show uh, and have that person putting Norm into the jail cell. Okay, any way that works for you, conventional, convict, Norm, and Law & Order. Okay, last one, and that's post-conventional. Post, a lot of ways you can go here, I'm going to go with a postman. Okay, post person, however you want to think. The guy who delivers your mail, not the people that you see behind the counter in the post office. Uh, post office is good too, you know, but it's it's kind of a building and that doesn't work for me. I need something active that's going to help me kick off my memories. So the postman is going to help me with level three. Level three has these fifth and sixth stages. Fifth stage is social contract. You understand that society's laws are, are sort of malleable, right? They're changeable. It's it's an agreement. It's a contract, a social contract. We could change the laws. Other communities have different laws. So you understand that it's a little, It's you're getting into this ability to think more abstractly than just, you know, some of the earlier levels. So what I have to associate with the postman is a social contract. And finally, stage six is universal principles. And so briefly, this is that the person who is at this idyllic sixth stage makes decisions based upon not their community or other people's communities, but what they know to be right everywhere in the universe. Th this is just right. This is the right way to behave. Okay? All right. So how do I associate those two ideas, social contract and universal principles, with a postman? Imagine the postman could be your postman, a generic, stereotypical postman. He's come to the front door, and he's going to offer you two things. In one hand, he's got a contract. All right, so hopefully you've seen the contract or just make one up in your head. You know, it's, you've got a place to sign, right? There's a contract that you have to sign. Sometimes you, you had a postman who wants you to sign something. That's a social contract. In the other hand, he is holding your edition of Universe Today magazine. And picture a magazine with the universe, the Milky Way on it. You got stars and all that kind of stuff. Though you can give yourself a nice, vivid picture, a big image on the cover of the Universe Today. I don't know, I'm making that up, although I think it's a website. And that's going to stand for Universal Principles. And the contract is for social contracts. Okay, so let's see what you can remember. You can boil Kohlberg down to PCP, pre-conventional, conventional, post-conventional, post or three people, a preacher, a convict, and a postman. Now let's go back to the preacher. What what have we got? What's our imagery here? What is the preacher doing? He is smacking bees with a fish. Obedience, selfish interest. Okay, stamp that into your head. Next level, convict. Who is the convict? What's his name? Norm. 
What's happening to him? He's being put in jail. He is, or he's being hit on the head by a, maybe by a lawyer, even or a judge. Okay, law and order. If you have a question on a test, almost certainly it's going to have things like norm, social norms, it's going to have law and order and all that. See those key words in the question and bring up your imagery. Last stage, postman, what does he have in one hand? He has a contract. Okay, social contract. Decisions are made based upon what everybody in our society has agreed we ought to do. And what has he got in the other hand? He's got your copy, your latest edition of what magazine? Universe Today. And you're going to see the word universe in any question on Kohlberg's sixth stage. So I challenge you, go through these later. Because one of the things we know, in addition to mnemonics, mnemonics are great, but so is spaced out learning. So if you're listening to this, I challenge you to think about this an hour from now, three hours from now. And go through them. Who are the three people again? Let's see. There's the, 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 the pre. Oh, that's a preacher. A convict. Oh, that's a con, you know, conventional convict. And a post. Oh, that's a postman. And then imagine what the preacher, the convict, and the postman are doing. And you will be able to bring up the six stages. Okay? So that's that. I, I was going to end it there, but, but some of you really like the one is a bun, two is a shoe. So... Very similar imagery, but let's try it. One is a bun, okay? So what do you want to do? Well, you've got, we, we've already got bees and ants. That's the first stage. So if you want to go with one is a bun, now this leaves out the pre-conventional, post-conventional stuff. This just goes through the six. So we're going to go through one is a bun, two is a shoe, up to six. So one's a bun. I got a bun with bees and ants on it. Obedience. Two is a shoe. Connect that with self-interest. I'll go with the fish. Selfish. Wearing shoes. Kind of silly. You know, the fish could be doing anything with the shoes. It could be throwing the shoes. But I'd rather, I think it's kind of silly. Maybe he's even dancing. He's got shoes on. <laughs> okay. Uh, three is a tree. All right. So I've got, a, I've got social norms. I've got my, my norm guy there. So I could picture norm in a tree, some, some guy in a tree. There used to be a show called Cheers, right? There was a guy named Norm on it. And he said, picture him up in the tree. Picture the leaves spelling out the name Norm. That kind of works. Uh, whichever of those two works. And so that's three is a tree. Four is a door. Now here, uh, I've got to connect that with law and order. In this case, I'm going to have a policeman uh, holding up a door. It could be a policeman behind a door. It kind of works for okay, too. Uh, policeman holding up a door. Because you, your interest here is maintaining, and I saw that word a lot, maintaining law and order. Or your favorite character from law and order, the TV show, is behind the door. You open the door, there he is. Uh, five is a hive. And I gotta connect hive with a social contract. Now what I could do is, so I've, I've got a hive, that in itself isn't terribly interesting, but bees flying around it, even though I don't like to use bees more than once. But I don't know, this, you know, the bee, the hive thing, that's the way these one is a bun thing work. I could change them. But I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with the bees, uh, but how do I connect the bees flying around the hive? With a, con a social contract. Well, you know what I could do? I mean, I could have bees signing a contract on top of the hive. I could have bees shaking hands, right? Because that's an agreement. <laughs> well, usually when you have a, when you sign a contract, somebody shakes your hand. So imagine a few bees on top of a hive shaking hands and saying, okay, they got a contract. They sign it. One of the bees is sitting at a desk signing a contract. That works for me. And finally, six is sticks. And how do I uh, connect sticks with universal principles? Imagine the Milky Way. Because whenever I think of the universe, I think of Milky Way. Imagine the Milky Way. You're looking at a picture of it, maybe a big poster of the Milky Way. But it's all made out of sticks. That big circle that you associate with Milky Way, that's all sticks. It's not unlike a wreath, Christmas wreath made out of sticks. That looks a bit like the universe. Okay, so let's try it. Let's see what you've got. I'm going to leave the, the three images, the preacher, convict, and postman, for later on. One is a bun. Let's take these six. What's on that bun? Bees and ants. Bees and ants are on the bun. So if someone, if there's a test that says, what's the first stage in Kohlberg's model? You go, well, let's see, one is a bun. Oh, obedience. We got the, the bees and the ants there. Okay, what about the second stage? What's that? Two is a shoe. A fish wearing shoes. Fish, selfish interest. Okay, three is a tree. Who's in that tree? Norm, social norms. Four is a door. Well, who's behind the door? A policeman, law and order. Maybe maybe he's knocking on the door. You know how policemen are? Police, open up. It's kind of scary, and I like that, because that helps with memory. So the policeman's behind the door, holding up the door. 
Five is a hive. What are those bees doing on top of that hive? They are shaking hands. They they got an agreement. They just signed a contract. All right, that's what I'm going to go with on five is a hive. Six is sticks. What shape are the sticks in? The universe. Okay? So there you go. I'm going to end the episode here. Hope this was helpful. Feel free, if you've got other imagery that comes to your mind when you do this, come to the website and say, hey, I thought of this instead of this. Well, I thought of this instead of that. And that works for me. All right. Hope that helps. See you next time in the Site Files. Take care. One last thing. Remember to check out my memory course. You can use these strategies to get better grades on your tests, to remember people's names, and even help you to remember those jokes you keep forgetting. So you will be amazed. Avid.fm slash memory master. That's avid, A-V-I-D dot F-M slash memory master. Thanks. <laughs>